Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about unofficial memory upgrades for the QNAP 53D series. Now a few things straight off the bat. I am going to be utilizing the QNAP TS653D for today's testing but do bear in mind that what we're doing today is largely going to function on the 253D, the 453D and indeed this 6 bay NAS as well. What we're going to be doing today is installing budget kind of unofficial memory. Now, the memory modules we're going to be using come from a company called Time Tech, which isn't really a brand name that jumps out. We know Samsung, Kingston Crucial, that sort of thing, but this is probably one of the more budget memory modules out there. With the 8 gig module arriving at about 30 quid and the 16 gig module arriving at about 60 pounds. So again, a huge amount of uh, memory capability there at 2,666 megahertz, which is greater than the 2,400 megahertz actually that this unit arrives with, and we're gonna be upgrading to it. But there's a few things we have to bear in mind. First and foremost, this device officially supports up to eight gig of memory. That's King, um, sorry, that is QNAP themselves and Intel, the CPU manufacturer's recommended maximum. But we want to see if we can install larger capacities. There are two DDR4 sodium slots on this device, and we want to replace one of those slots with an 8 gig module. And then if that's successful, we're going to replace the slot with a 16 gig module. Now, we have done tests with the Kingston range, uh, sorry, the crucial range of 16 gig DDR4 2666 non-ECC sodium memory with success. We were able to install two 16 gig modules inside this very NAS. So it'll be very interesting to see if this time tech memory is just as successful. When we're inside it, we're gonna assign some memory to some VMs, as well as double check that the system resources can indeed use and see for the most part, that memory inside QTS running on this QNAP. I have already installed QTS in advance. So I've already set up QTS. I've got multiple RAID uh, systems in here already set up. So there's nothing further I need to do than to install this memory. Make sure if you're going to do this test that you have QTS already pre-installed and make sure you power down the device safely before you proceed. Now, if you buy the 8 gig model of these, there will be two 4 DIM, um, four, uh, DDR4 SODIM modules inside. And there's an L-shaped area inside where you can install that memory. Remove the front panel. Tilt it and uh, get the drives out first. Make sure you don't lose track of the order that they're in. So we'll move along as we go. Removing those drives. I've got four 14 TB drives there in a RAID 5 environment and two SSDs when we were running our 10G tests on this device. So there we go. If we have a look inside, you can see that L-shaped partition and one DDR4 sodium module inside there, the one of the ones that the unit arrives with. And I'm going to install the TimeTech 30 quid 8 gig memory module. Make sure you line up the shorter area of pins with the one inside. And when you do install this memory, do take care just to touch the edges of the sodium module. It's a little bit delicate. It's quite a tight area to install it inside. And do make sure that the clips on either side of that memory module click in when you install this memory um, area. So now we've installed our memory inside here, and that is the 8 gig memory module. We will be testing the 16 afterwards, but only if this test is successful. And then it'll be interesting to see after that when we test other brands like Kingston and Samsung, whether they're just as successful. But do bear in mind, we are running an unsupported setup. Now, QNAP isn't, you know, as, as strict as Synology when it comes to memory. They're a lot, they have a lot more supported compatibility in terms of their memory modules. But still, nevertheless, we are testing unsupported configurations here with the memory exceeding 8 gig recommended maximum by both QNAP and Intel. So do bear that in mind. Also, during the course of this, bear in mind that you don't have to take these risks yourself. I'm doing this video to hopefully show if you guys should or shouldn't be doing this. But if you are interested in getting an NAS that has memory pre-installed without you having to fill around with it, you can, of course, always visit span.com. But bear in mind, 
they're not going to give you a solution with memory without you uh, buying a complete package with hard drives because they want to make sure they can run all of the tests on that memory and you need drives inside to do that. So do bear that in mind. Otherwise, there should be a link in the description to the QNAP memory pages that I've made where I'm updating the available memory that is supported on this device all the time. So I recommend you check that out. But let's get this device plugged in over there in my test area and then double check if that eight gig works. And if the eight gig works, can we install the 16 gig? Let's find out. Okay, so I'm pleased to confirm that the TS653D has indeed booted successfully. And if we have a look at it in QFinder, we're able to see that this is indeed the correct model. Now, there are lots of little options open to you in the background here. And as I've discussed on previous videos, there are ways in which you can do uh, consistency checks in the background of your QNAP NAS, as well as running a number of individual background tests in individual processes. So regardless of whether you try to emulate what's going on in today's video to any lesser or greater degree, do bear in mind that there are ways in which you can check the background operations of your QNAP NAS periodically. But if we have a look, we can go into the main control panel, which you can see there, 12 gig usable memory. So the eight gig module has been recognized alongside the four gig model that was already in the system. If we move forward, we can go into the resource monitor and that will indeed show the available memory being utilized and what's available to the end user to take advantage of. If we make our way into the hardware option, there's an option in there to find out information about uh, the system itself and how much memory is being occupied. So we have a look there, there's 12 gig. It mentions there's two memory modules, one's four, one's eight. And if we go into the hardware information, we can see the four gig A data module that it arrives with on its own and the eight gig module that we have installed, the TimeTech module there. As you see, it's the 16 gig model that we're showing there and there's the eight gig down there, the one that we've installed at 35 quid, another one at about 60. So these are the model IDs that we are dealing with. Now, coming back into it, next thing we want to do is try to allocate some of that memory. So we're going to open up the Virtualization Station VM app. Um, we're going to go ahead. We're not going to show that next time. And from here, we're just going to create a generic VM environment. So we're just going to call it Test VM. Then from there, we're going to make it a Windows VM, although we're not going to install um, Microsoft Windows on this. We just want to have a standard BIOS uh, environment. We're going to use two of the available four cores. And because we have got 12 gig available, we just want to make sure we occupy the full eight gig there. So we're going to let all of that be occupied. We're going to let it live on the NAS there and click OK and create our virtual machine here on the QNAP NAS which it's now going to do in the background, and then we'll power up that VM at exactly the same time. So while it gets ready to boot that VM, and if we open it up, we can have a look at that BIOS settings there that are being shown as a virtual machine. And had we installed a Windows ISO or image or a backup, we could have reverted to that, but we're just going for the standard setup there. And as you can see, it's allocated eight gig of memory there. Now if we go into the resource monitor, this is showing that we haven't actually allocated that memory because QNAP utilizes a system called memory sharing, which is a lovely little feature of their memory settings. The result is that the system NAS and the system uh, VM is able to share the memory as it's available. But of course the VM may well overwrite other processes as it grabs the VM memory. Now again, you can set it up to dynamically allocate it or let it be sharing so systems can um, exchange data as and when. But still, it's very nice that we can allocate that eight gig of memory there and that the VM seemingly has it acquired. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to power down that VM. Um, in doing so, we are gonna force close the VM. I do not recommend you force close a VM. It is the equivalent of um, pressing and holding down the power button. It is not good for a VM. And the only reason I'm doing it here is just because we want to shut this down very, very quickly. Uh, we're gonna shut Virtual Machine Manager there. And what we're gonna do now is shut down this NAS and then install the 16 gig TimeTech module 
into the 653D to see how it reacts to that. We know the crucial 16 gig uh, 2666 megahertz model worked. So it's gonna be interesting to see if it can recognize this second module. Let's let it shut down. And once again, remember these are the modules we're looking at and do remember dual rank memory, everyone. You wanna make sure that each one of this, all the cells on this memory module are one gig each. So in the case of uh, the 16 gig model, there's eight one gig cells on one side and eight on the other. And in the case of the eight gig, it can be listed as single rank as you see here, but it's not the end of the world because this is still going to be those modules. But just make sure if it's single rank, because this is showing one side here, that it is still indeed one gig cells. So I recommend dual rank, um, on pretty much all the memory modules you use of eight gig and or above, but some single rank modules manage to keep eight cells on one side. So just in case you need to compromise, that is an option. So we're gonna let the NAS shut down, and now I'm gonna go over and install the 16 gig module now and reboot the NAS. Let's fast forward. Okay, so good news. We've rebooted RTS 653D, and I'm pleased to say that it has booted into QTS. I've not logged into it yet. Let's log in for the very first time and have a look to see if it has seen and acquired that 16 gig memory. Do bear in mind, of course, as I log into here, that uh, Chrome is going to remind me how fantastically unsafe the budget password I'm using on this trial device is. So do bear that in mind. Uh, so don't worry too much about that warning if it pops up. But here we go, there is QTS. And once again, we are going to look at the control panel, we are going to look at the resource monitor, and we are going to look at virtualization station. So in the control panel, we can see here, 20 gig of memory has been made available. That's 20 gig, so that's the four gig that it arrives with by default and the 16 gig that we have installed. If we make our way into the hardware uh, management area, go into system status, we'll be able to see that this device has got two slots, one occupied with a four, one occupied with a 16, with 20 gig, 19 gig usable, because one gig is being used by the system. And in the hardware information, there is our 16 gig module paired with the four. So again, it looks like it has been recognized. In the resource monitor, if we go back to that, we're able to see the total usable memory versus the acquired and utilized memory there happening in real time. And we can list this down here by how much is being used. So now we're gonna make our way into virtualization station three. And before we boot this VM, what we wanna do is expand that area of memory. So let's get that up to 16 gig now. We're gonna use 16 gig of memory on this VM. We're also going to uh, enable, we're going to disable memory sharing, see if that has any impact at all long term. But now it has updated that VM to be a 16 gig memory VM, and now we can run that VM there, and we'll see pretty much the same thing we saw last time, I imagine. Uh, but it is, of course, worth bearing in mind that we are still running a very microcosm type test here. This is not indicative of your NAS long term into the future. And you do not know if using unsupported, uncompatible memory, uh, and particularly unsupported memory quantities beyond the eight gig recommended by QNAP and the manufacturer, what the impact that will have on your storage long term and its stability. So I do strongly recommend once again, that you maintain numerous tiers of backup, uh, at least two tiers of backup and snapshots and or array configuration to protect you from the event of your system randomly rebooting if there is a memory issue that could destabilize and cause um, a read write error in your RAID. So do keep an eye on that. But I'm gonna cease things here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, these are the memory modules we have used today, but you can go to the links in the description to both span.com and of course NAS compares with its breakdown of all the different supported memory configurations across different NAS systems and all of their unofficial um, options from companies like TimeCheck, Kingston, Crucial, Samsung, and more. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more, and I will see you next time.